Hello, thanks and welcome to this uh, chat, Jason. Hope you're having a good day. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, you came into the 96 World Cup as a replacement for one of my favorites, Craig McDermott. Uh, were you surprised by the call? Because uh, all of us in India certainly were at the time. Uh, yeah, I was very surprised. Um, as I was in the, I was only in my first season of first class cricket for South Australia. And, uh, first full season, and it was a back end, and I replaced Craig um, in the World Cup squad. He got injured. Um, I hadn't played against any of the Australian guys uh, that were away, uh, or many of them, um, and I'd never met any of them. So, you know, arriving in India, um, you know, I was meeting, you know, a lot of these guys who were my, you know, hero. A lot of them were my heroes growing up. Um, so I was meeting them for the first time. Um, so yeah, so it was a bit, bit of an eye opener for me, but um, but yeah, it was uh, very exciting. What do you remember most about that '96 World Cup? We remember you as the one with the long, flowing air, uh, new age kind of bowler that uh, came to India at that time. Uh, I, I didn't play a game in that uh, World Cup. I was, I was just there as a as a backup seam bowler, um, but yeah, I was I was there at the back end. Um, obviously, there was. Uh, quarter final against uh, New Zealand. I remember Chris Harris making a wonderful hundred um, that we were able to get over the line. Um, and then obviously played the semi final, um, managed to scrape through that. And then, then obviously that final against Sri Lanka um, at Lahore. And, um, you know, it was a, well, it was just a wonderful occasion. It was, it was a game that, um, you know, we were a real chance of winning. Um, but but unfortunately, um, Sri Lanka were too good for us on the night, and um, we just couldn't quite get over the line. Um, so it was a shame. It was it, it was great to be a part of that squad, um, you know, and, and learn from a lot of guys who, as I said, were, were heroes of mine and growing up. So I was only twenty years of age, so I was just, I was just a new kid who just just started playing first class cricket, and all of a sudden, to go from essentially being playing club cricket, you know, within a year year or so, to be um, at a World Cup final was pretty surreal. You then started out as a, a test match bowler. Uh, you had an injury to almost every body part of yours. Uh, was that a frustrating time for you? Uh, getting injured, starting, playing, then again getting injured. Can you tell us something about that? Uh, yeah, um, I had a few injuries early on particularly. Um, and, and all those little niggles and um, various things all culminated with, I suppose, breaking my leg uh, in Candy in 99 um, and then having an extended time out of the game uh, with that. But yeah, well, look, it was frustrating as, as a young player. As you, you just want to play as much cricket as you can. So I had a few little niggles, but I realised that if I wanted to have a career, I needed to uh, make sure I was staying on the park. So... I had to take a bit of ownership of my preparation and my my training um, if I was going to have have any sort of career. Um, so that that was kind of the real tipping point, and you know I um you know worked really hard on my um, strength and my fitness, and uh, and you know continually worked on the the technical side of my bowling to make my action as smooth as possible, um, so that I could have a career and. Um, you know, I think a combination of that, that discipline, as well as, um, you know, naturally filling out and, and growing into my body, so to speak, I, I think, you know, a combination of that really helped. That collision, what do you remember most about that collision? Do you still have scars from that collision with Steve Waugh? Um, yeah, it was, as I said, it was, you know, that, that was probably the, the tipping point of all the injuries I'd had, I'd, you know, I got back into the Australian side and then for that to happen, um, look, it was, it was just one of those things that happens in cricket. You know, I was running in from deep backward square. Steve Wall was running away, you know, from short fine leg and we just happened to collide and didn't hear each other. Um, yeah, it was just awful. Um, and yeah, just, <laughs> just something that, yeah, I, I I find it really difficult to watch, you know, the, the footage. Um, so I haven't seen the footage for a long time um, because it was, yeah, it was a 
yeah, pretty low moment in my career, to be honest. And uh, yeah, look, it, it, it happened. Um, you know, it made me reassess how I was going around my preparation and my training. And uh, yeah, so it was yeah, but it was a yeah, a, yeah, an awful collision. You were not part of the '99 winning World Cup winning squad. Uh, in 2003, you started off, and then you got injured again. Was that a frustrating time as well, missing out on being part? of a World Cup winning squad after having been part of a squad that finished runner up in uh, 1996 like 99 I wasn't part of the I wasn't in the squad um so I wasn't I wasn't selected um the selectors uh, decided I wasn't wasn't in the best squad so that's fine I uh, understand that then 03 2003 I was I'd played the first half of the tournament I was actually bowling really well uh, on a personal note uh we were playing some good cricket and then I then I hurt some um, tendons in my ankle. Um, so I missed the second half of the tournament. So I was pretty disappointed with that. Um, but look, at the end of the day, you know, Australia went on and won the World Cup. So I was happy with that. Um, but you know, I was watching that from home as I'd gone home to get um, get better and, and get get treatment. Um, so, yeah, so I was, I was gutted to miss it. Uh, miss, miss the um, second half of the tournament and the final in 03. But I was just pleased that uh, the lads were able to uh, win the trophy. Under Steve Waugh and coach John Buchanan, uh, Australia then set off on a massive match-winning streak uh, of 16 test matches on the trot. Uh, you played in the latter half of that particular winning streak. Uh, what was particularly great about that particular squad? Um, well, well, winning. Um, you know, I, I was part of that at the back end of that, that I suppose, that winning streak. Um, the, the the team was just playing really good, hard, ruthless cricket. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you, you perform. You know, each player performs strongly and perform better than the opposition. More often than not, you're going to come out on top. And and you do need a little bit of luck in in terms of weather. Um, you know, test matches go for five days. You, you could dominate for four days and be on the cusp of victory. And um, you know, you can you can have a weather event that would, you know, render the game a draw. Um, so I suppose the Australian team were pretty lucky that, you know, we were able to um, we play such good cricket that we were able to find ourselves in winning positions, you know, reasonably quickly. And uh, look, I, I just think it, it was just a combination of, um, you know, really good attitude um, by all the players and coaching staff, um, the, the good cricket that was played. Um, yeah, and you're going to have a little bit of luck along the way. Eden Gardens 2001, does that still bring back memories? Uh, I'm sure not so happy memories. You tried every trick in the book, including uh, putting out your hand and making faces at uh, VVS. Uh, what do you remember most about that particular test match? Well, look, I mean, that 2001 series, um, certainly one of the best cricket series I was I was involved with involved with as, a, as an individual. Um, it, it was it was just fantastic cricket. It was hard cricket. Uh, we obviously won the first test in Mumbai, and then um, in our game in Kolkata, um, you know, we, we we were in the box seat. We we really were. We um, we had the chance to really drive that game home, and uh, but we we came up with a road. We came up against a roadblock, which was uh, VVS and, and Rahul. Um, and look, look, you, you just have to give them credit. They they were absolutely wonderful. Um, the way they played, we. I mean, we threw everything at them. We, you know, we, we gave it our very, very best. Um, you know, I, I mean, all our us seam bowlers, you know, we, we gave it our all um, and we just weren't able to, you know, get them out. Um, Shane Warne, I thought, bowled really, really well, um, you know, to to VVS Laxman and Raul Dravid. Um, and they just kept finding ways to... to score runs off him, you know, keep out his good deliveries and, and punish, you know, it, it, he was bowling good deliveries and they were punishing him anyway. Um, they were two of the best uh, knocks that you'll see in cricket. And, um, you know, as a team, um, as individual bowlers, I mean, we, we had no match for them. You know, we had no answers. They were, they were just simply too good. Were you known to do such things, uh, to put out your hand and make faces at the batsman? Maybe has almost broke into a smile while you were doing that. Uh, were you known to do such things to break concentration of the batsman? Uh, we, we had to try something. Um, we, we weren't able to uh, get them out. So I, I just thought, I remember bowling the VVS Laxman and I just thought, geez, if I run into bowl here, if I can try and 
find a way to get him to think about anything but actually watching the ball and hitting it. If I can get him, th- you know, smiling or laughing, and you know, I might just be able to get him to do something that he doesn't want to do. He, he might just nick one or he might miss one. And um, and but no, he he still smacked it out of the middle of the bat. Um, but you know, you look, have to try these things, especially when um, you know when the opposition are playing so well. If I jump forward to the 2005 Ashes, uh, you had formed a successful combination with Glenn McGrath. Shane Vaughan was also a part of the squad, and then you had uh, uh, Brett Lee in and out of the squad. Uh, the fact that you didn't play after the third Test match in the 2005 Ashes, how much did that set back your career, and was that a big learning curve? How disappointed were you by that? Uh, look, I, I was disappointed. Um... I wasn't surprised because I wasn't bowling very well. Um, what, what I was most disappointed with was was myself in terms of not being able to adjust and adapt. Um, you know, I was I, I went away from the things I was good at as a bowler and what um, you know what I did well. Um, I was looking for things that weren't there. I was searching for um, you know for the for the magic uh, solution. When you know the, the the solution was there, staring at me in the face, you know I just needed to make sure I was I was disciplined, I was working hard, I was um, practicing well. Uh, I was looking for, you know, because I wasn't bowling as well as I knew I could. I was looking for the magic solution, and and I just needed to simplify things. Uh, I, I was overthinking things a lot um, and trying to find the the magic solution, and uh, you know that and that was a big learning curve for me was, you know, I, I was an experienced player and I was, you know, allowing things to get in my mind that didn't matter. Um, and rather than just focus on, you know, bowling the ball as, as well as I could, you know. Um, so, yeah, that, that, was, that, that was a good learning curve for me. The 2005 Ashes, how much did that cut short your aspirations to play for a very long time for Australia? Was that a very deflating experience? Um, well, I mean, it was, um, I was 30 years of age, um, you know, and I, I got dropped. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't bowling particularly well. Uh, so I went back to South Australia and, um, you know, went back to, you know, got back to the basics of, of what allowed me to bowl well. And, and I was fortunate enough, I had a really good summer, but I sense that the selectors felt it was probably time to move on from me as a player. Um, yes, I came back and played a couple of games um, on a tour of Bangladesh, but I knew that um, the Australian selectors were, were probably looking to move on from me as a player. Uh, there were lo- the more uh, bowlers coming through the ranks, uh, younger younger bowlers, because um, they already had a couple of experienced guys, you know, like McGrath and Lee, that for instance. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day. They, the selectors didn't feel that I was the man for the job, and um, you know, look, I was, I was disappointed. But at the end of the day, it was, you know, it was me. I was, I was the one who had to bowl better, um, and and I, I showed glimpses of what I what I could do. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, it, it was it was the right call by the selectors. They they made the call. Um, so and that was absolutely fine. Do you think it was a top order conspiracy? against you because you had just scored a double hundred and they didn't want you back because they were threatened by the opposition? <laughs> no, look, I, uh, <laughs> I I knew even after I'd scored those runs and it was my last, uh, well, as it turned out to be my last test match, I, I deep down, I think I had an inkling that um, it was going to be hard for me to play another game. Um because the Australian team, a number of players that were out, that were coming back after having some time out uh, through injury, illness, whatever, um, personal leave. Uh, so I knew it was going to be difficult for me to get back into the Australian side. Um, so I, I just I just went back and played for South Australia. Um, and my performances uh, for South Australia didn't warrant a recall. It was as simple as that. Um I wasn't the bowler I was a few years ago, a few years previously. So, um, look, it, it, for a little while, yeah, probably a bit tough to accept. But, you, you know, at the end of the day, uh, 
my statistics as a bowler at that point weren't lying. You know, I I wasn't as an effective I wasn't as effective as I as I was in the past, and um, the selectors made the call. And and look, I I've, I'm often asked this, and um, you know, I felt the selectors were, were right. If I was in their shoes uh, as a selector, I wouldn't have picked me. So, okay. you know, so you know, you you have to be. I think you have to be completely upfront, could look in the mirror and be completely honest with yourself. And, and look, I, I knew that my time in the Australian side was over. You retired quite early thereafter, at the age of 32 or 33. Was that an easy or difficult decision to make? Um, it, it was a reasonably simple decision in the end. And I mean, I, I felt I, I probably wasn't going to get any better as a bowler um, playing for South Australia. Uh, I was 32 at the time, South Australia. I still had a season with, um, I'd signed a county contract with Glamorgan. So I was turning 33 during that season, early in that season. So I was basically 33 and a half years of age when, I'm, when I'd finished um, professionally. Um, you know, I'd, part of me, I'd, I'd finished up. Um, I'd agreed to uh, link up with the Indian Cricket League uh, there in India, um, the ICL, um, which... You know, to be to give it credit, it was it was a very well run um, competition, and uh, I played a couple of the editions uh, of it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to not only still play, but also, you know, learn you know about moving forward into other things that I might want to do post cricket. So I was able to sort of spend a bit of time seeing how the commentators go about their work in the commentary box. I was able to sort of dip my toe into a little bit of coaching. Um, and that's what attracted me to the Indian Cricket League um, because I still got to get my fun and, and that of, of playing and that, you know, was, which I love playing, but also I got to explore, you know, the opportunities to maybe do a bit of commentary work and do a bit of coaching. So for me, all up, the package of playing in the ICL and it was a, – a, a, I have to say it was a very well run uh, tournament, um, you know, before all the, the stuff that happened with it, and um, you know, but it, it was it was enjoyable, um, you know, and I learnt a lot. Um, but but I knew my time was uh, it was coming to an end as a player. I I didn't have the desire to um, to necessarily keep going um, as a full time professional. Um, you know, I was my mind was starting to um, wander into what would I do post career. Um, you know, so that that's that was where I was at. And very quickly, you moved into coaching. Uh, you coached a team in Zimbabwe. You coached a couple of county sides. You almost became the England national side coach. You've been a coach in the BBL. You've also been uh, in and out of the IPL as well. Uh, was that a natural progression? What have you learned from your stints as a coach? <laughs> uh, look, I, I do enjoy the coaching. I, I, I love helping players and coaches achieve their goals, achieve their dreams uh, to be better. Um, I'm a big believer in developing relationships with uh, players, with coaching staff, um, with other members of support staff, uh, with everyone, all the stakeholders involved in um, the team that you're coaching and the association you're at. Um, you know, for me, developing those relationships and creating an environment um, that is, you know, challenges players and challenges coaches, um, but also is very uh, welcoming and, and values everyone's opinion um, and, you know, look, looking to challenge people to get better. And, um, and most of all, about just having a little bit of fun because... You know, we all love the game, and uh, and for me, it's a, a big part of that is is enjoyment and enjoying what you're doing. And you know, if I can help develop an environment that um, you know has that as an important element, uh, and players are going out onto the ground and uh, with a smile on their face and and enjoying what they're doing, um, and and they learn from every single you know day's play that they play. Um, and as coaches as well, if we can learn as much as we can as well about the game, about our players, about everything, then, you know, I think that's a really good environment in which to, to play creative. And, uh, 
makes it a bit of fun, um, but we're also getting better and, and you know, and, and looking to try and win as many games of cricket as we possibly can. Was it sometimes flattering to think that the old enemy, England, would want you as their national coach? Uh, you and Aussie, old enemy wanting you back uh, as a coach, was it flattering? Oh, oh without a doubt. Um, it's, yeah, it's um, very flattering. There's no doubt about that. When you, you know, you get a, a journalist ring you up or... Uh, you, you see something in the press that, you know, your name has been linked with, you know, such a prestigious job. Yeah, it, it's absolutely flattering and, um, um, you know, and very nice to be thought of, I suppose, by, by people uh, in that way. Um, so, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, look, I, look, one day, I, look, I'd absolutely love to be involved with an international side. Um, you know, I think that would be, that would be a wonderful opportunity. Um, you know, if that'll happen, if or when that will happen, I've got no idea. Um, you know, my focus at the moment, uh, I've, I, I coach Sussex in the county cricket um, and I coach Adelaide Strikers in the Big Bash. Um, you know, I, I absolutely love the jobs that I've got. Um, who knows what will happen in the future? But, you know, at the moment, just just focus on those those roles um, and and go from there, really. We haven't seen you in the IPL for a long time. Is that still on the agenda, being part of the IPL as a coach? In the uh, look, look, it, it, look. That, nothing's off the table, I suppose. Because as, as a coach, as a career coach, you want to test yourself and uh, you want to work with the best coaches, the best players. Um, so, look, you, you never know. If an opportunity arose, um, then certainly have a look at it. I think as any coach would, um, you know, because you know I've had a bit of experience with T20. Obviously, the T20 blast in England in English county cricket is, is a wonderful competition. So I've been fortunate enough to coach Yorkshire and Sussex in that. Um, obviously, the big bash of, of coached Adelaide Strikers for five seasons now, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, learnt a lot. Um, it's been very enjoyable. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, and obviously I coached in Zimbabwe um, for, for a couple of seasons and, and played the T20s there as well. So so I've got a bit of experience with involved with T20 sides and, um, yeah, so look, you never know. Um, you know, if, if an opportunity came up, I'd, I'd certainly uh, um, have a conversation about it. In your stints as the uh, as, as a county coach, uh, you work very closely with a couple of the Indian players like Pujara, Ishan Sharma. Have you sort of developed a relation with them that you understand their game very well? Yeah, we, we had um, Chitesh with Pujara at, at Yorkshire a few years ago when, when I was head coach there. And, um, you know, we needed a, 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 a batsman in the in the top three uh, who could do a job for us. You know, in, in sometimes challenging conditions, and you know, someone with a with a you know very good temperament, someone who could uh, you know absorb some really good bowling, and and Pajara fitted that bill perfectly. You know, I think he found it a challenge. You know, early season in county cricket uh, with the Duke cricket ball, <coughs> excuse me, moving around in English conditions. You know, he found that a challenge, but I, I think that really um, was a good test for him as a as a player and a good learning curve um, for Chiteshwa. Um, you know, I think he he grew as a player. He he, he learnt more about his game. He, he he adapted to conditions in England, um, which can be quite challenging for top three, top four batsmen um, at the best of times. So so I thought he did wonderfully well. Um, then, yeah, in my first season coaching Sussex, I was fortunate enough to have Ishant Sharma um, come on board uh, with us. And, um, you know, what really struck me um, about Ishant was his um, thirst for knowledge, his willingness to listen, um, ask questions, um, try new things, um, you know, because it, sometimes you can get senior players and experienced players who... Um, you know, we'll just go about and do their thing and that they know what they need to do and, and that's fine. Um, but Ishant was very much, he knew what he needed to do to, to bowl well, but he was he, he also knew he wanted to get better. And um, knowing that, you know, he had an opportunity at Sussex, knowing that England, uh, India were going to be playing in England uh, later on, you know, I think he saw it as a really good opportunity to learn and, and bowl in English conditions and, 
and, and test himself. And, and look, he was fantastic for Sussex. You know, I know the Sussex players were really impressed with, with Ishan's um, work ethic. They loved his personality. He fitted in really well in the dressing room. Um, but I think his, um, his capacity to um, learn, uh, ask questions, try things, you know, his, his work ethic in the nets and out on the track was phenomenal. Um, you know, it was really good for our young, our young seam bowlers at Sussex to see what uh, this is what it takes for a test bowler. This is a he's, he's an Indian test bowler, um, and he's bowling really hard, working really hard at his game to get better. And he's played what eighty test matches, um, and he's still trying really hard to get better each and every day. So it was really good for our young bowlers at Sussex to see um, to see such an experienced player. Uh, who's played so much Test cricket, um, continually trying to improve and get better. Who's got the better hair, you or Ishant? <laughs> no, that, that's uh, no question. Uh, Ishant is a far superior bowler. Um, look, he's performed well all over the world, all different conditions. He's he's spent a lot of a lot of time on the subcontinent. Um, you know, bowling on on wickets that probably you know favour slow bowlers um, and, and spinners and and stuff and you know i just think um the way he's adapted his bowling around the world um i think it's a credit to him and i think it's a credit to you know all, all the um his teammates and and coaches that he works with in india um you know he, he's, he's a fine young bowler and he's a fine young man no i meant uh are you envious of ishan's hair i i meant are you envious of ishan's hair <laughs> he, 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 I enjoyed his hair. Yeah, we, we had similar haircuts there for a while. Um, yeah, no, nah, it was that was fantastic. I, I enjoyed his hair. That's for sure. <laughs> Final question: uh, Who's the toughest batsman that you bowled to ever? Ah, uh, look, look. Is there any number? Um, it, it's hard to split. Um, you know, I, I, I'd probably have to say the two that really stood out for me. Um, you know, look, any batter on their day can have a day out. I remember, you know, a series where Michael Vaughan scored a mountain of runs against us in Australia. It was a Rahul Dravid scored mountains of runs. VVS Laxman um, scored a heap of runs. Um, you know, Kumar Sangakara was a wonderful player for Sri Lanka. Mahela Joe Wardner, you know, these wonderful players. Jacques Callas, South Africa, um, you know, all these these wonderful players. Um, but probably the, the two that, for me, um, probably stood out was Brian Lara and Sachin Tendulkar. Um, two two different types of players, two equally difficult to get out. Um, you know, I, I always felt um, I always felt Sachin was probably a little bit more harder to dislodge in terms of getting his wicket, um, but I didn't feel he would take you apart. Uh, quite the same as Brian uh, Lara. I, I always felt I was in with more of a chance to get Brian out because he, he was a bit more expansive with his game. Um, but, you know, I found uh, found Sachin's defences very hard to uh, to to get through. Um, so, look, two fine players. Um, I'm just really glad now that I don't have to bowl to them anymore. <laughs> they, they were just far too good. Um, and it was, it was actually, for me personally, um, it was quite an honour uh, for all those names that I just mentioned to you then. Uh, it's quite an honour for me to be able to sit here and talk to you and, and say that I actually bowled cricket balls against these guys. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was a wonderful time to be a, be a cricketer. Uh, got to bowl against the best in the world. And, um, you know, for me, that was very satisfying. Thanks a lot for your time, Jason. Uh, hope you have a great day and you stay safe and stay in the No worries, mate. Thank you. Thank you.